I know you're gonna dig this. So you found yourself in China. That's cool, but China's kind of a weird place. I mean, up is down, left and right, and your dinner is often served with a collar on it. That's kind of weird. I mean, you're not just in a whole new country. You're in an entirely new game, my friend. But games have rules. And what are they? You can't get anything done in the world without rules. Thankfully, there are ten rules. I didn't open up right now. There are ten rules, nay, commandments one really should follow if you are successfully navigate these troubled waters that are China. These are the ten commandments for living in or traveling through China. All pay heed. The Lord, the Lord Jehovah, has given unto you these fifteen. Oi. Ten, ten commandments. For all to obey. Thou shall bring thine own toilet tissue. You see, toilet paper, like coffee or clean underwear, are daily commodities. These are things we use every day and should probably not be shared. I don't share my coffee. I don't share my wife's underwear. You absolutely cannot wear my bra! And I don't share my toilet paper. The problem with this is, is unlike in the West where everywhere provides it, in China, your toilet paper grannies come in and just steal it in a heartbeat. So what do you do? Businesses simply don't provide it. They can't afford to. 20, 30 rolls a day? No way. So if you want to use toilet paper, and I do suggest you do, what do you do? You pop in a convenience store and buy your own personal pack. One or two kwai has you covered. Never expect to see tissues at the toilet. Always bring your own tissue paper. Thou shall not tip. Tipping is an entirely Western construct. Let's make one thing abundantly clear. Tipping does not get you better service. It never has. Tipping is something Western employers figure out. They can pay their employees a little bit less and you as a customer make up the difference. So when you come to China where tipping isn't a thing, what happens? Your bill is 40 kwai, you give them 50 kwai and they're thinking, that stupid foreigner gave me too much money. Here's your 10 kwai back, you rube. Now, yes, there are gonna be a few more expensive places, Western restaurants, hotels, where they may try to fleece you a little bit on the tip or you know gratuity yeah it happens they kind of take a cue like anything else oh westerners are used to paying a little more we'll get that money out of you thine credit card is basically worthless so why aren't your credit cards any good in china well let's imagine for just a moment we put a bunch of people up on the moon for several thousand years and lo and behold you decide you're gonna make a trip there and you want to buy a cheeseburger you get up to the counter, you pull out a 20, and they look at you like, dude, what's up? You don't have any moon rocks? Don't you know you can only buy a cheeseburger with moon rocks, man? And that's the same thing. I mean, China has only been open for 50, 60 years to people from outside of China. Foreigners. So, yeah. Plastic money just really hasn't taken very much of a hold here. Yes, in big cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, you're gonna find places that are gonna take your American Express or your Visa card. But for the most part, it's cash or electronic money. Electronic money has really taken a hold in China. Your WeChat, Alipay, those are everywhere. You find these little QR codes at every store. You find beggars in the street. They don't even wanna take coins anymore. They got a QR code. I'm told the hookers actually take QR codes too for electronic money. Never tested this, don't plan to, but I'm told so. But yeah, your credit cards are just kind of something they just don't want. It's moon rocks to them, man. American Express card, don't leave home with it. Thou shall fight thy neighbor for the right to pay for the bill. Choose your weapons, steak knives, forks, spoons. Why a spoon? It's blunt, it'll hurt more, cousin. But yeah, 
you are expected to argue, fight, bite, slobber, and growl occasionally for the right to pay the check. And you need to go back and forth several times over this. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. Mine. It's I said it's mine. You know, make a big uh, kind of hairy scene over this because it's impolite. If someone says, I'll pay the check, and you're like, okay. Come on, man. This is China. Pay the check. Fight for it. Knoweth from whom you accept a ride from. So you remember how your mom said, don't ride in the car with strangers? Hey, little boy, get in the car. I got a surprise for you. Yeah, welcome to the digital age. These days, it's all about riding in random cars with random strange dudes. And oddly enough, that's the safe way to travel by taxi in China. Sure, you could flag down a taxi outside the airport or side of the road and hope not to get ripped off. Unfortunately, you have better odds of successfully playing pickup sticks with your butt cheeks than getting ripped off these days. Traveling by taxi in China, unfortunately, is a gamble. You have your regular taxis, which may or may not follow the fare schedule, and then you have your great, illegitimate, Think taxis. And these are the guys that just drive cars around and uh, charge wherever they want to. You'll see them outside the airport all the time. Hey, hey, taxi, taxi, where you go? Where you go? If you want to travel by taxi in China, the best way is download an app called Didi, D-I-D-I, short for a Didi.Chur. This is the safest way. It'll tell you who your driver is, what the license plate number is. It's basically Uber for China. They tell you where you want to go, and if there's ever a problem, you can hit the little call police button right there on your app. You can share the uh, ride info with a friend. By far, safest way to get across town. Thou shalt not say, China is a China's economy China term limits I love isn't a part of I support USA Winnie the Pooh and 5,000 years of Learneth some Chinese already. So, China. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to learn some Chinese, seeing as you're in China, right? True story. And if they can learn some English, you can pick up a little Chinese too. Not that hard. Pick yourself up a book, teach yourself a little bit. And I realize I'm being a little hypocritical here because uh, what a jungle and feichong zaogao. But I'm trying. And you can too. Challenge accepted. Overall, the prevailing language, however, is Mandarin. Putonwa. You plan on being in China at all? Pick yourself up some. You'll find it comes in very handy from trying to pick up girls to ordering food. It's a necessary survival skill. Immerse yourself with other Chinese speaking people. Listen to some Chinese music. Watch some Chinese TV shows with or without subtitles. Take a class. Read a few books. Get a Chinese girlfriend. Pay attention to what she's doing with her mouth and replicate. Well, the audio parts of that anyway. Thou shall not act like a barbarian. So there's a prevailing school of thought among the older generation China, and the newer one as well, that round eyes equates to mystique and beauty, <gasps> but not necessarily intelligence. As such, you're not expecting to have any understanding of China's social norms or Chinese etiquette. So yeah, prove them wrong. Know how to use chopsticks. But when you do use chopsticks, never point your chopsticks straight down into your food. That's rude. Doing so is basically like offering incense to the dead. Very impolite. You should avoid any political discussion in China. And not because Chinese folks don't know how to discuss things politically, but rather because they do. Huh? And you're gonna lose. 
no matter how good your argument is, in their eyes, you're always going to be wrong. As such, you should avoid any dissemination about or because it's just not going to go over well. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? And while that's fine, you should never ever do drugs of any type. Hardcore or recreational, doesn't matter. All the same in China. As a matter of fact, they have a word in China for people who do drugs. They call them prisoners. Keep a thine temper and do not get angry in public. So yeah, in China, you gotta keep your temper. You can't lose it, but don't ask me. Ask Wendell Brown. Now, who's Wendell Brown, you're asking? Wendell Brown was an all-American college football coach who came from America over here to China to coach football. Unfortunately, got himself on a little barker fuffle, and before you know it, he found himself in jail. What? That's right, in jail for defending himself. Now, in the West, you're allowed to defend yourself, encouraged to do so when push comes to shove. Not here. Unfortunately, no matter what happens, you are a foreigner and you're going to be wrong. A lot of this is going to come down to nationalism, maybe a little good old fashioned xenophobia. Doesn't matter. Just don't do it. Now, you want your get out of jail free card? That's pretty simple. Sometimes you just got to suck it up, push it down, and when you smell trouble, you walk away. Just don't get into fisticuffs in China. That's when you get the do not pass go. Do not collect $200 and go straight to jail. Thou would do well to bargain occasionally. So there's a saying, where's a 300 pound girl to sleep? Anywhere he wants to. Why? Because he can. So why should you negotiate in China? Because you can. And of course, it'll save you a lot of cash. So negotiate is going to bring your price down. In China, everything's negotiable. And now when I say everything, I don't literally mean everything. Obviously, you can't walk into McDonald's and negotiate on the price of your Happy Meal. That's not gonna happen. Obviously not. But what you can do is you can negotiate on a lot of things, like the cost of your taxi. Oh, not stopping. No time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> but yeah, the cost of your rent, the cost of your taxi, even some of your regular day-to-day -day expenses at the fruit and vegetable market, like your cell phone, possibly even your taxis are negotiable. Why should you negotiate in China? Because you can. And it'll save you a lot of cash. You also gotta keep in mind, as a foreigner in China, there's gonna be a lot of places that are going to artificially raise up the price for you because you have that white face. Yeah, one of those. It makes sense. If they're gonna take the, take the price up a few notches, you wanna bring it back down a little bit. Save yourself some cash, don't get ripped off. Why should you negotiate? In so why should you negotiate? Level the playing field. And because you can. Respect thy Chinese neighbor. And try not to get offended. So one time in the metro, I discovered a lady who took photos of me. I had a series of photos of me like this. So I approached the lady, asked her why she took photos of me. Is it because I'm a little person? You know what she did? She argued with me. She didn't take a photo of me. Even the photo was shown to me, she denied that it was me. So I argued with her and I just deleted all the photos and even argued with her like I would need to call the police and she ran away. Whoa, I just landed in a snarky video. Stay frosty. When traveling in China, make sure to take the train. You meet all sorts of cool people. You get to use an amazing toilet. You eat great food and you get to see China as you pass on by. Don't feel offended when Chinese do something which is different from the rest of the world. They sneeze on you, they laugh at your teeth at you at your body size like my, my 
my hubby is big belly, they rub in front of you just thinking it's a Buddha. Are we living in the same planet? They will actually like ask a lot of questions whether you get married, how much do you earn? Like this is more like it's already beyond the your your privacy, but you have to accept it. Even though you don't accept it, you have you shouldn't feel be offended. This is their culture, right? I accept that challenge. Well hey, I appreciate you guys watching the Ten Commandments of Living in or Traveling Through China. Like anything else, make sure to like, comment, and Unsubscribe. How long have you been back there? I don't have a timer. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty. So tipping. Hey, there's the police. My husband need me to do that. I don't know why. <laughs> Thankfully, there are ten rules. See them make a little Chinese ten there. Kind of feel like I'm doing a little Naruto shadow clone jutsu. But you want to make sure you're wearing your floaties and swim diaper before the all-inclusive dip into the pool, do we?